On its release, the Exceltra was an absolutely outstanding weapon. Basically, everybody loved it. Reason why? The Riven disposition plummeted really quickly. Today, the Exceltra is faced with the mechanics and status changes of Mainline 2020, and you know what? It may not be the most powerful weapon in the game, but it sure as hell does pack a punch, and you need this one in your collection. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable that most Tenno should be able to build, but of course, we also got the quote unquote endgame set up with a Riven, even though the Dispo is only one out of five. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Axeltra. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Exceltra is an automatic rifle which fires projectiles, these mini rockets of sorts, which will be detonating upon contact in a 4 meter radius. But it does have one issue though, they need 7 meters worth of flight time to arm before detonation. For example, if I was to shoot a target up close, like so, no explosion, but when it gets far away enough, 8 meters, I'm gonna be getting the explosion as well. So keep in mind there are two sources of damage. One, the projectile physically making contact with a target, and two, the explosion. What you can do is go for the feet and try to get as much AoE as you can, but there is a problem with that. You will be losing about 35 to 40% of the damage per bullet or per mini rocket. So bear that one in mind. There's one more issue to the XL Dry, and I don't know if you can notice it by now, but you should be able to notice it now. <laughs> I'm completely bone dry on ammo. Now there are several ways around this however. For example, you can drop an ammo pad. Ammo pad nowadays are not that expensive to make. You can make 100 of them at a time, simply get the blueprint from your dojo. But a more, let's say, cost effective way will be to go for carrier and or carrier prime. By default, this fantastic little sentinel comes with the following mod ammo case. Increases ammo capacity by 25% and converts ammo pickups into ammo for equipped weapons after 2 seconds. And this normally should should solve all your ammo issues unless you go crazy with the fire rate. So bear that one in mind. We're not gonna use any uh, weapon for now on the little sentinel so it doesn't skew our test results. Now there is one more usability issue which I would like to point out. The explosions have this guaranteed not knockback, not stagger, push away effect. Because it doesn't actually stop you, stop the enemy from shooting you per se, it just pushes them back like that. Now it does help when you want to arm your missiles faster, right? And it does help with you not to get self-staggered and all whatnot. But honestly, ever since the removal of the self-damage system in Warframe, it's just annoying and that's pretty much it. That might not annoy you or it might annoy you, but again, to get the full damage, you want to get the explosion as well on your targets. I would still go for headshot simply because this is a critical weapon and you got a bonus multiplier. If you're still unclear on how critical chance critical multipliers apply in Warframe, link the cards right now. And I do believe, my friends, that's pretty much it for functionality. Oh, one more thing. This weapon has a two second reload. It's Goose's uh, trademark weapon. Goss, Goose, whatever you guys want to call them. And it does have the following quirk. If you reload while sprinting, like Sue, well, like Sue, 25% bonus reload speed. And if you use it with Goss, 50% bonus reload speed. So bear that one in mind. Now let's check out stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity, 60 out of 60. And if your comes with only 30 out of 30, jump into actions, plug in that auto King catalyst, double that mod capacity. Is it worth 100%, my friends? 100%. I would definitely fully build the Excel draw, even in a melee full meta. Now you can pay 20 plat to have this one installed, you can grind one from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, and some events in Warframe also feature an Oroki Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. My weapon has been 4 mod a total of 6 times, it is kind of a 4 ma heavy weapon, it comes with 1 polarity by default, 1 Naramon symbol, which will be good for 1 mod or 2 mods, but I would just plug in another free V symbols, 4 if you got a Riven. Accuracy is going to be 23.5. Can you use Heavy Calibre? Of course you can use Heavy Calibre. Nobody's stopping you at the end of the day, but I wouldn't do it. I'll tell you why. While the explosion is not that much affected, because again, you got 4 meters worth of explosion range, the accuracy of the primary bullet is affected. Alright? 
You see that orange crit? That's from the Vigilante set bonus. <laughs> Absolutely love it. So considering that you want to get for the optimal amount of damage, consistent headshots with, yeah, with both the projectile and the explosion, I wouldn't go for heavy caliber. And besides, you got plenty of other options. However, if you are set on using it as a, uh, a Wii weapon and just shooting for the feet like that, then you can go for heavy caliber as well. When it comes to the critical stats, my friends, this is absolutely beautiful. Brings a tear to your eye and all of that good stuff. 32% base with a 2.8x critical multi. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Absolutely fantastic. Fire rate of 12, magazine of 48, a tad on the low side, reload of 2 seconds, which is more than enough, especially considering you get a 25% of bonus speed when you sprint, and especially if you use it with Goose, you get another 50%. Uh, Keep in mind that the projectiles of the XL run needed to be super quick by default, so, you know, Gauss doesn't outrun, uh, sorry. Anyway, Riven Disposition, 1 out of 5. This has changed from the last time we reviewed the Xeltra. It used to be free, now it's one simply because this is a very popular weapon in Warframe. And why wouldn't it? It's easy to use, it's subjectively good fun, and it's subjectively cool looking as well. So only one out of five, which means Rivens aren't exactly worth it on the Xeltra, but more on that just a tad later. Status chance, terrible, 6%. 6%. Now, normally, in Warframe, when you get a weapon like this that has projectiles, right? The projectile physically making contact with a target and the explosion have different stats, right? Different damage, different layout sometimes, and different status chance. I can't get the status chance for the projectile. So, explosion, I mean. So, I'm naturally gonna assume it's 6% considering how many uh, status applications I see from the weapon. So, bear that one in mind. Damage, impact. Yeah. It's, it's the projectile, okay? This is just the projectile slapping the target. It's not the actual explosion. So bear this one in mind. You got puncture slash the fall off is 50% with a range of 4 meters. It's a huge damage fall off. It's a bloody huge damage fall off for a 4 meter weapon, honestly. So again, try to get the explosion right smack in the center. You can go with Prime Firestorm if you so desire. 66% blast radius. From my humblest of points of views, it's not really worth it. But speaking about worth it, Weapon Exilus or Plexilus slot. This also changed from the last time we reviewed the Excel draw. You can go with the following. Terminal Velocity with 60% projectile flight speed. Not that it needs it per se, the projectiles are fast enough as it is, but this makes it borderline hit scan kinda, I wanna say. Besides, it doesn't really have much of a recall, so it doesn't have that usability issue. You can go with Guidant Ordnance and Heavy Caliber, but as I demonstrated in the past, this one basically makes almost dif no difference on most weapons, so bear that one in mind. And if you don't want to use carrier or drop pads, Vigilante supplies for all your ammo issues. Speaking about... I don't have a segue. Uh, standard build! And you got damage acceleration, multi-shot with split chamber, critical chance, critical damage, point strike, vital sense. What do you know? Hunter Munitions is here? Pa! The huge surprise! And 60-60 vital mods with malignant force and rhyme rounds. Now let's keep in mind this is an MR8 weapon and some of you guys might be low in MR. If you don't have the endo to fully max out serration, forget about it, leave it free from the top, four from the top, max out your split chamber first, go for critical mods, and this one again, leave free four from the top. Hunter munitions, you gotta get this one. Don't know where to get it? Get it from Cetus Bounties, okay? Go down to Cetus, you'll get it, don't worry about it. Malignant Force from Corrupted Vor in the Void and Rhyme Rounds from Spy Mission. These are not expensive mods. And in the Weapon Excellent slot, if you're newer to Warframe, forget about this one, okay? Don't unlock it. It's 20 plat to unlock or you gotta farm the adapter and then craft it. Blah, blah, blah. You don't need this one, trust me. In the option slot, though, let me give you a couple of options. First, super cheap mode, because I do like my cheap builds, which are effective. Vigilante Armament, 60% multi -shot. You can't go wrong with this one. It's impossible to go wrong with this one unless it's the Secura Penta, but that's a story for another time. This is a solid option. Another great option I will showcase later, <laughs> after we showcase the standard cheapo build on Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. Oh god, corrosive projection, no, 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 no corrosive projection for you. That would skew my test results. How horrible, how horrible. We'll keep carrier, he doesn't have a weapon and he won't actually modify the damage. So again, guys, go for headshots. Alright, if you can, go for headshots. Take a look at all that damage. Take a look at that, that slash, all that vital, more than enough. Which, considering the vital proc applications, I'm still not convinced that the explosion has 6% status. It's just a good deal. Again, you got two sources. The projectile making contact with a target and uh, the explosion. The enemy is gonna die in flight, dead in flight, dead in flight. Uh, trust me, well, one of them at the very least. But again, ammo will be a concern. In normal missions, if you don't overdo it with fire rate, you shouldn't have much 
uh, much of a problem. From my humble point of view, this is good performance. Look at that. And in actual missions, having that knockback effect can be beneficial at times, and at other times can be just, well, plain old annoying. Just like my voice. <laughs> Sorry, I put background music. You guys like it? Because I did, like thought that would deter from the voice. Another option, instead of which used to be expensive, and it's not anymore. So I guess I can, can I call this one new player friendly? Is that, is that a thing? Because you can farm Argon Skull from Deimos now. It costs next to nothing. It used to be a fantastic status mod. It used to... When I say status mod, you did the Acolyte event or you paid like 300 platform. That's what I mean, not an actual status event. But anyway, the point is now it's super cheap and you can get it from uh, Deimos Bounty. It's on headshot, 135% critical chance when aiming for 9 seconds. The advantage to this one is the fact that you get guaranteed crits as long as you're aiming. After it pops, right? So, having guaranteed crits from my humblest of points of views is definitely something we're having in Warframe. So, we're gonna spawn in those corrupted heavy goons one more time. We're gonna get more oranges like so. We can shoot from this place. Sure, make use out of that AoE and all whatnot. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Take a look at all the collateral damage. And you know, when you're playing Warframe outside of boss fights, and it, it, there's usually at least a couple of enemies around you, depending on what you play, what kind of setup you got, and all whatnot. So, that AoE damage definitely comes in useful. And of course, with the explosions, I have no problem keeping Argon Scope up. As long as I fire, I got plenty of time to reload, aim my gun, and just absolutely annihilate whatever stands before me. But as stated before, that push away effect. Kind of gets annoying, and again, it doesn't stop those enemies from shooting at you, so it doesn't really have much of a benefit to the player. Hmm. Hmm. One last option for this one: we cannot ignore the status meta because we can't, and we can go for one last, one last suggestion. This is going to be the 60/60 heat mod for my rounds. 60% status chance and 60% heat. You can also go with wildfire if you prefer a bigger magazine and reloading less often, but considering the reload speed by default, considering the quirky benefit of the sprint thing, I would just go with the 60-60 heat mod. Before I go any further though, Oh yeah, thank Fusilade. You guys keep shoving this one down my throat in the comment section. My friends, it's not worth it. If I was to equip Fang Fusilade, it will increase the proc priority of Slash and at the tiniest bit of damage, but it's not gonna be anything significant. Essentially, you are wasting a mod slot, especially considering the weapon status chance, especially considering the proc priority. Right now, you got proc priority viral followed by puncture and then slash. Even with two fang fusilades, that would be a major waste. It's not worth it. You no longer have the 4x IPS rule in Warframe, so bear that one in mind. No fang fusilade! Okay, very rare cases we actually use it, and it does provide a real, real benefit. One more time, the Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120, and now with heat, because more explosion, more heat, more armor reduction, more awesome! It's just awesome to shoot this weapon. It feels spacey, it feels futuristic, it feels like something out of Doom, which is why I'm showcasing it with my Mama Hildron fashion. Guys like, you guys like, rate in the comment section down below. Out of 10, how much? Please don't too, please don't, my ego. Too soft, it will shatter. The performance of the weapon, as you can see, is more than adequate. You can go for the 60-60 heat mod as well. Keep in mind that if you're going down to Deimos, I wouldn't go for Vital. I would go for Corrosive instead. So you can go Corrosive and Heat. The difference it will make will really depend on your own situation. But I'm going to showcase it really quick. You go with the Electricity Rifle mod, which is called High Voltage. Can be farmed from the game. The mission is called Nair Guard. The planet Eris. Find all the free secret caches. Then upon extraction, you got about a 5% chance at that one. Or Shell Shock. Right, so bear that one in mind. It's not a great farm, so if you see battle, bring the electricity mod, simply go and buy them from battle. Here's the thing though. If I no longer go for Vital Mar slashes are puny. Tiny. So small. <laughs> That's what she said. So <laughs> instead you can simply renounce the hunter munitions mod. In a case such as this, it no longer makes any sorts of sense. What you can replace it with is what we already talked about, my friends. You could go Argon Scope or you can go more multi shot. Which one do you guys prefer? I'm betting it's Argon Scope. So I'm going to be using Argon Scope instead of uh, Hunter Momo. So you can go like so. Now you'll actually get a benefit. Slash without Vital isn't much in Warframe right now. It used to be. It's not. Anymore. Look at that. Oh yeah, that feels a whole lot more satisfying. Now with a build such as this, you don't stop firing until the target is dead. Right, so there is no shoot, then hide behind a pillar and wait for the thing to bloody die out of bleeds, which is, was always to me a horrible game style, which is why I always preferred corrosive. I'm gonna shoot until the bloody thing dies, because you know what? That's a lot more satisfying. Is it more effective than Viral Slash? Hell no. Nope. 
not even bloody close, sadly, but it is what it is. And again, if you're going to all the demos, go for a build such as this. My friends, you got all the variations on them, right? Of course, cater each and every single individual weapon to your preferences so you can enjoy your experience more. Take these are as a couple of suggestions. Speaking about suggestions, Riven Mods, don't do it. That's my suggestion. It's only one out of five. It's not worth it. In order for you to get a roll which is quote unquote slottable on the weapon, you're gonna have to be either very rich or very lucky because even though Riven Dispose one out of five, that will not stop Riven Traders from charging a whole lot of plat for a great roll. Such as, <laughs> oh my God, mama. Mama, what you do to me? multi shot critical chance, and damage. Up, top, top, minus impact. Just the top, you know, just the cherry on top. Beautiful. How beautiful is this? 31 rolls, huh? Huh? Of course, it's not mine. I never have ribbons like this. Stop it. It's a loner from a friend. Uh, that minus 50% impact will lower the chance of impact rocking, which is absolutely fantastic. If this had this for 2 free, it could go to 100. It used to be minus 100 impact on the surface. Can you imagine the owner of this one? How sad he must have felt. When the disposition got down. So I get your comments. When I when I talk about Riven nerfs, I get what you guys are saying in the comments. Trust me. Last test with the Riven. It will make a difference. Will it make a huge difference? No, I can't call it huge. Then again, I'm gonna have to define huge. That's what she said. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'll stop now. Straight for headshots, as before, my friends. Vital Slash. Look at that. Vroom. Absolutely wrecked, man. Carnage and destruction with the Axeltra. Yes, even at this Dispo 1, the right Riven will make a difference. And while I don't recommend Rivens for Dispo 1 weapons, you know what? If you love the weapon and you want to get the absolute max out of it, you're going to have to get one. And not just any Riven, a real good one. That, however, does not mean that the Axeltra is not a competitive weapon even without said Riven. Now, <laughs> Warframe boss with Lady Mirage Prime. Not Harrow, no. Mirage. She already has crit, so no need for that. We're gonna go with Dark Lady Mirage. Remind me to update the fashions on this one. They're kind of outdated at this point. Needs more wings. Needs more wings. Now, as far as Warframe buffs go, you know the drill, right? Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets is definitely the way to go. But if you're fighting Corpus, which don't have armor, though keep in mind, some Corpus units, you see the ones with a little orange health bar, the yellowy orange health bar, they have armor underneath their shield. They're bastards like that. So wear that one in mind. If your build calls for, I don't know, Sprint Boost, Rejuvenation, Growing Power and all whatnot, simply go for the aura that you enjoy. You're not forced into this one. When it comes to Arcanes, these make a lot bigger impact. Arcane Adventure R5 from the Third Idol on down on Cetus, 21% chance on damage for a 45% critical chance for 12 seconds, the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe. At least for, from my humble point of view. It applies to your primary, secondary and to your melee at the same time. As for our second Arcane, Precision won't do much for us, but Arcane Rage will. R5, once again from the third idol on, down on C, the on headshot, a 50% chance for 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. It's huge, okay? It's a huge impact for your primary weapons. But let's be honest, do you always double, double Arcane offensive? Normally, instead of this one, you might want to have something like your armor, your energize, whatever else you guys choose to use on your Warframe, because at the end of the day, it is, you know, War frame, you get it. One last buff though on your Sentinel's weapon. Any Sentinel weapon you want, like my 7 form Artex. I should do a guide on it. It was kind of pointless to format seven times. Spoiler alert, I destroyed the guide. How terrible. I uh, get a Vigilante mod, offense supplies, fervor, and armor men, so you get the 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Even if your little Sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain said buff. We're gonna bump up the level to 155, unpause the targets so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. And I'm gonna trail off into my own world right now. Do you guys know how much of an enjoyment I get every time I play with a weapon that is fun to use? Not necessarily super powerful or anything like that, but a weapon which is cool to use, like this one. Take a look at what I can do. Is it the most effective weapon in Warframe? No, it can't be. You know why not? It's not a melee. <laughs> and I die a little bit inside every time I say that, but you know what? It is what it is, and yes, we are in a melee meta, but my friends, the developer is aware of this, and we're gonna be getting primary and secondary weapon buffs soon enough. Until that time, though, you can't exactly say that the Exceltra is a weak weapon by any stretch of the imagination. My friends, go and build this weapon, love it, enjoy it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.
As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, in all honesty, it would be difficult for me to promise you that, you know what, it'll be ready by next time or even within a week because sometimes this kind of content takes a while to make. But I can promise you that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.